What up, players? What must tap in this mud? I got my hands on the new Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon, and I thought it would be a great addition to Spooky Toberfest celebration of all things spooky and creepy. I've decided though when I was looking at tactics and special rules and stuff for how I would use it in my Vampire Counts army that I think I would much rather take it as a terror geist, the freaky undead bat with the terror geist death scream shriek thing that I think is much more interesting. And uh, the ghoul king I'm probably going to keep it off and maybe I'll magnetize him or, or something so I can use him as an option later. But this is what I'm going to build him as. So I'm going to go away now and I'm going to put the model together and then we'll come back for a review on what's left on the sprue and whether or not you can use it to convert other models in your vampire counts army or just for other things that projects that you might have. Alright, we'll see you with the finished model. And here he is, the finished terror geist. Wow, is this a massive model. I built up, as you can see, the Ghoul King. It comes with, the set comes with an extra 20 millimeter square base. So I, instead of gluing the Ghoul King onto the drag, uh, the, the Terror Geist, I decided to build him separately. That way I can just pop him on the base whenever the two of them are together on the battlefield, or I can take him off and just use the Terror Geist as a rare option without the Ghoul King on it. But man, is this, kit loaded with detail and I think it's because it comes in so many different pieces that they're allowed to do so many detailed things like building all the guts and the gore inside the rib cage and all the different levels of tendon and stuff when I just think about the old plastic or the old metal dragon that GW used to produce with the plastic wings compared to these guys compared to this kit it's just amazing and look at the detail on the bat head wow that is just fantastic I'm gonna really love painting that up but just the hunched over pose the thing about the two kits that when I was thinking like oh it'll be easy they just come on the same the bodies look the same it's just the heads that are different no it's actually the terror guys comes in a lower hunched over pose where it looks like he's he's actually crouched down on these different rap rock outcroppings Whereas the zombie dragon is actually perched in an upright position, so less of this more lower position, and he's in the zombie dragon is in more of an upright position, standing on his hind legs. And um, I just think that's great how GW managed to model a kit, design a kit where you could model two completely separate looking creatures. Like if I had a zombie dragon built up right here, he would be standing more upright rather than in this low sneaky kind of crouched over position. But yeah, just fantastic kit. The detail on the Ghoul King is just phenomenal considering how the regular ghouls already are a step above the GW zombies. This, oh no, he fell down. bat for a second. Put him on my ghetto turntable and bring him back here. All right. Just look at the amount of detail from the cloth to the skin to the bone necklace. This thing came in, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. The face itself was a piece. The tongue isn't attached to the face. It's just like the savage orcs where the tongue is attached to the torso. The back part of the torso and the front part of the torso are separate. And I believe that allows them to do a lot more detail work on the skin. I, I could be wrong, but I've read on a forum somewhere that, oh yeah, if it comes in more pieces, then that allows them to put more detail on each individual piece. The legs are each a separate piece and the arms are each separate. But look at the ghoul claws. They look so, so dynamic and so detailed. It's just really more apparent that these things would be poisoned if they raked into you. Very Freddy Krueger looking. I can't wait to paint him up like my other ghouls, all fleshy and bruised and pale, rather than that, that light green rotting, rotting flesh color that GW, GW Studio ghouls are painted. Um, yeah, but I, I love this model. I can't wait to paint him up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away. I'm going to show you the, the sprues that I have left over and what you 
could do with the remainder of them just so that for you modelers, modelers out there see what you could put in your bits box and see how much more of a bang you can get for your buck. So first of all, these sprues are humongous. They, you only get two sprues in the box, but they don't, they're not like cut in half so that you can have four different sprues. They are literally the mo most monstrous sprues that GW has come out with, I think. Um, or, or, or just reminiscent of... Ah! Quiet! I'm filming! Of all these new Storm of Magic monsters that GW is coming out with. So, um... In this one, though, we've just about stripped it bare, except for these two pieces, which I believe are the legs of the Vampire Lord. This one little rock, rocky outcropping, which you can add to your base. And some dark Eldari looking chains with snares at the bottom. Or maybe I just think they're, they look dark Eldar-ish because of the Talos Pain engine that I'm currently uploading to YouTube, the War Boss tutorial for. It's taken super long. All right, sprue number two. In this, we've got the, oh, we should turn this over, I believe. It's gonna be easier to see the, the body of the blood dragon vampire lord. There's the front, there's the back of the torso. There's the excellent shield you've got left over. So with the vampire lord, you can build him up and if you have some other steed to put him on, he doesn't come with the, the, the throne thing that he's sitting on that's actually modeled onto the zombie dragon's neck. If you decide to use a zombie dragon instead of the terror geist, the saddle actually comes on the back of the mount because I guess you can't take the zombie dragon on its own. Like you can't take the terror geist. So the, the saddle is mounted onto the zombie dragon's neck. Then you've got more zombie dragon pieces, the horns, grizzly trophies on them. Then you've got the blood dragon's vampire lord's equipment, like this lance, which just looks amazing. It looks like a lance with two spiky bits on the end. The sword. Oh, here, here, are, the, here are the legs. Oh, I wonder what those two pieces were on the other sprue. Could be the arms, maybe? The upper arms? Yeah, the detail on this breastplate is just amazing. Okay, what else is on this sprue that we can focus on? Here are the heads. Some more spiky, chain flail-y looking bits. So you've got one bald vampire head screaming. You've got one helmeted, winged helmeted vampire lord head. And the thing that's kind of sad about this, I think, if I could go on a rant for a little while, is that I know that vampires at this point are channeling their their bestial, uh, primal nature, but I would think that there would be like one smooth looking, handsome looking, like, oh gosh, I don't want to say handsome, I don't want to get a lot of like twilight hate mail, but um, just the, you know, an attractive looking vampire head, like, not even attractive, but just something Something with hair, like, it just doesn't make sense to me that vampires can be so uh, integrated, them, can integrate themselves into such a high level of, of, you know, society. And then you give us these, like, or you give us this one, like, crazy feral looking vampire with a shaved head. Uh, if, if I feel like they, they missed the mark too. Like, Blood Angels, for, for all of the Blood Angel specific kits, like the sang Sanguinary Guard and the Death Company, all those guys have hair, and um, and in all the other Marines ones, they're they're all big and bulky and like they they've got the shaved head looking thing. But it's just kind of look like it looks to me like with the bald heads that they're more of a ghoul kind of thing. Like the Ghoul King would have had a bald head. To me, it seems like that. Um, you know, it's it's just not reminiscent of the old school Christopher Lee, Bela Lugosi vampires like that they used to do with the Von Karstein kind of thing. I don't know. <clears throat> maybe it's just not feasible anyway, since this is supposed to be a blood dragon, and maybe blood dragons shave their heads. Um, all right, there's the end of that rant. Um, here's the backside of the shield. 
And then these pieces are just pieces that go on the neck of the zombie dragon that identify it as a dragon rather than a terrorgeist. The terrorgeist has more wispy hair pieces that go on its neck and head and all over its body. But these are obviously more tendon and they, they look like ripped pieces. Here's the, the, the head of the dragon. So it looks like decaying skin and heads and, and all of that stuff. Oh yeah, all right. And here's just like the shoulder pieces and the, the, the holes are modeled in such a way to make the dragon look upright when it's standing and you put in all of its arms and everything, which I think is just so smart of GW. Like you have all these leftover bits, which you can't really do anything with because you've used the majority of your kit to make the, the other option. This was, uh, if I had built a zombie dragon, then we would be looking at the terrorgeist pieces, but you know, you have the, the head pieces, you've got the, the spinal cord for, with a saddle on it for mounting the, <clears throat> the, the, the vampire lord. So I wonder if there is a way that you could do, I don't know, I wonder if with my, uh, with some clever magnetization, if you could do both have the zombie dragon head built up with the saddle and, and, this, and the vampire lord sitting on it and then switch it out with the terror geist. Yeah, that might be something to think about. I wasn't smart enough to do it with my first round of building this kit, but maybe it might be something to try and doing and, and, or, or looking up guides on the internet. Maybe somebody's written about it or, or I don't know, or not. Maybe it's impossible, but anyways, thanks once again for joining me on this unboxing and review. Uh, for value per dollar for modelers out there, you have so much extra stuff left on this kit But the only thing I could really foresee you using again would be the vampire lord seated and You know if you put him on a horse a skeletal horse or something that you've got left over maybe then Then you can have a mounted vampire lord that you can have in your army It's like a free vampire lord or if you decide to build a zombie dragon then you get a free ghoul king model so there you have it. I'm going to end the video now. Hope you've enjoyed it. And you can definitely use these weapons um, for, other, for other options in your army. And um, yeah, I'll be posting up the Warboss tutorial on how to paint this guy next. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're enjoying Spooky-tober. Check out all the other videos I've posted up this month if you haven't yet. And um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and favorite do all those awesome things below. Okay, thanks and we'll see you in the next one.